in Switzerland. <coughs> Over this book, they didn't want the world to know that he had bordered on the, on the edge of crazy. You ever had any moments like that? Any member of your family? Did you ever see dreams like these things? Snakes and falling and flying and they're evidently, everybody does them. You know, I don't know, I got cheated somewhere, but I learned to repress. I was always falling, and I just learned, and I'd wake up when I hit the ground. But uh, uh, Freud and uh, Jung split over the libido. Now that's that little thing that Freud says drives the sex instinct, and it's a, uh, not only the hottest, but the strongest urge in life is the sex urge, the libido. Why is everybody awake? <laughs> you have said no. The will to live is the greatest uh, force that drives a person's life. And here's his uh, research in here. That's a big book. <laughs> Who knows what this is called? somebody up. So these two guys began to go around and with the Oxford group. Have any of you ever heard of the Oxford group? It was a liturgical movement that had six steps in uh, uh, started around 1870, 1880 in England and spread to America and the Catholic and the, and the Episcopal Church and the Lutheran churches. And was really strong, and you entered into the church, you agreed that God would be, you were powerless without God. That was the way you entered. And then there were some other steps, six steps, that Alcoholics Anonymous went to this church. They went to C.J. Young. One guy spent a year and a half of daily analysis with Jung, and at the end, Jung said, I can't help you. But you must find a spiritual experience. That will be the only key to helping you over your alcoholism. So these guys put that in this <coughs> book. Now, if you have a problem, he wrote this book and said, if you have a problem, there is a solution, and there is a plan of action. So in this book, it deals with alcohol as a problem, it presents a solution, and it presents a plan of action. Now, I know you're just worried to death. How am I going to get back to that text? You never thought of that, did you? 
was asleep. <laughs> oh, good. Good. That's a, nothing encourages a preacher like somebody sitting there sleeping. Uh, it tells you to shut up when that happens. <laughs> sit down. Uh, stand up, speak up, and sit down. So Jesus came up with a problem, a solution, and a plan of action. And he decided how to gather his forces. If I'm going to play baseball, I get the best players that I can get, and I get the ball in the back. Jesus is beginning his forces that were to spread his message throughout the world. And he began, this is probably the second or third time he was up in this region at the Sea of Galilee. And he calls these guys, four of them, to be his disciples. So from this text today, and from what I read, it looks like that these guys saw a miracle that reconstructed their attitude. So that's the first thing that probably we need an attitude reconstruction. Now I say we because I am guilty as of all. Most of us get so old and so set in our ways that we're not flexible. Now, not you, but me. We refuse to consider new ideas, new interests, new attitudes. I'm too far beyond that. And we stay locked in our little prisons. Now, many people have sat and watched a kettle, kettle boil and the steam rises from it. But only a James Watt could look at that kettle and see the steam engine. Attitude. Reconstruction. Many people have seen an apple fall 